I'm Terry Owens. The summer season always brings us great events here in Maryland. Two of the most popular are Artscape and the African American Festival. On this edition of MTA Commuter Connections, we'll show you the best way to get to both of those events. Also ahead, an update on the West Baltimore Mark Rail Station project and a look at our Words on Wheels competition. We'll answer your questions on our Ask the MTA segment, and that's all coming up on this edition of Commuter Connections. Hello everybody and welcome to Commuter Connections. For this edition, we're on location at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, near lots B and C, where one of our region's most popular events will soon take place. In just a few weeks, this site will host one of the largest cultural events on the East Coast. I'm talking, of course, about the African American Festival. The event, which offers the best in African American culture, art, and music, has become a tradition and an exciting family destination for the July 4th holiday weekend. We're delighted to have Shalanda Stokes, president of Graybo Media, with us to talk about what we can expect this year. Hi, Shalanda. Hey, Terry. You know, for decades now, this event has continued to attract people. First, uh, well, we've moved around to various locations, but we now got this home downtown. What is it that keeps people coming back? I think this has been a regional tradition, I believe, since about 74, when it started at Stonefest. Oh, my so, goodness. So, I mean, through all of its iterations and names, I think part of what's kept people coming back is the community aspect. This is a family fun event with everything from testing to great foods. But, but I would have to say that it's probably the talent that keeps them uh, coming back every year. Yes, talent, a huge part of this, and we'll talk more about this year's lineup in just a moment. But let's, let's go back a little bit and talk about how the event has evolved over the years. The, the event has really evolved. I think that when it started back in, what, 74, part of it at Soul, Soul Fest was really about bringing together the African American community. It was about celebrating entrepreneurship, and it was about us figuring out how this African American community could really celebrate business, culture, family all together. So that's where it started. And I think in its evolution, it's gone through different sort of ups and downs around the ways, but it's come out to be that same thing again, where family is the center of what we're focused on. I was going to say fast forward to the yep. day and you, you're talking to people around this region of the country about the event, trying to promote it. How do you describe this to folks who are interested in what you're doing here? We, we, the best way to describe it is in a picture. And okay. so all we have to do is show sponsors, partners, uh, friends, visitors, the crowd, and they see how many people are really coming to this event and, and it sells it. So that's how we, we sell it with a picture, but the conversation that goes around with it is something about responsibility. This wouldn't have survived this long if it wasn't something that everybody cared about. I mean, Mayor Rawlings Blake wanted to make sure that this was a free event for the community. Mm -hmm. So it has every element in it from the food and all of that, but to the responsible things like entrepreneurship, financial literacy, health and wellness, all of those aspects as well. well. Now you touched on something that I'm sure is very important to the families that will be interested in coming out this year. You said the mayor was committed to making this a free event. Talk Absolutely. about why that's so important. Absolutely. A few years ago I think we attempted to have or they attempted to have this festival be a paid event mm -hmm. and although the fee was nominal when you talk about some of the families and you start to add the children in it became really cost um, prohibitive for some of the families so the attendance numbers went down. What the mayor wanted to make sure was that this was something fully, that the city was able to give back so that people could come out and get their testings and screenings, so that they could come out and get jobs, so that they could come out and figure out how to grow and develop their business all while having fun. Mm. And so in order to do that, she knew that it really needed to remain free. And so she committed the city support and then we solicit sponsors to also help you know, close the gap in terms of funding it. And so what does the community need to know about that? I think and I, that's an excellent question because I think what we really need the community to do is to also step up and support our sponsors and to support the event. This year we're not allowing people to come in and bring food and bring beverages and part of that is because we need, you know, our sponsors to make sure that they're getting the visibility and support that they need mm -hmm. in order to keep coming back and funding it. So I'm asking people not to bring coolers this year, not to bring, because 
they'll get stopped at the door this year yeah. not to do that and to really support our sponsors where they can. All that stuff's fun and good, but mm -hmm. what people really want to know about is the entertainment and the food. Now, can you give me a hint of something? I, I, can, give, you, right, okay. I can give you a hint. I can give you a taste of our headliners for Saturday and Sunday. So okay. I'll start with Saturday okay. and tell you that we have Fantasia Oh, on my Saturday. goodness. Get out of here. On, on Sunday, I got to take it a little bit different because okay. I got to say, we got. <laughs> not we have, we got. Patty. Oh my. Patty and Patty, Fantasia, the Patty and Fantasia. So, so it's, I mean. It's done. But, but, it's right. on. So, so we don't have to, in terms of marketing, our phones are like blowing wow. up. I mean, they are really blowing up. And so, and then it wouldn't have been possible really without, I mean, we had Visit Baltimore stepped up, Terry, in a, in a big way. Morgan State University stepped up in a big way. I mentioned State Farm. Coca-Cola, um, the Marines always come back and do really well. So our sponsors really wanted to make sure that this year was a phenomenal year for our partners. That is awesome. And the vendors also out, come out every year. Oh, the, you will be surprised. Yeah. This year we have some really tasty treats. Really? I mean, some, some, new things, stuff? some new stuff this year. And even in terms of the retailers that are there this year, they're, they're coming out with some really great art pieces. I mean, just some of the fashion we have. Um, and, and Under Armour may even give a little preview of some okay. things this year. So, I mean, it'll be really, really nice. Okay, so this is July 4th weekend. July 4th. So it's July 6th and 7th. Okay. Right here. Camden the, Yards. Yep. Downtown Camden Baltimore. Yards. Easy to get here. Light rails uh, not far. Metro's not far. Local bus not far. Lots of ways to get here. Lots of ways. I mean, and the MTA does some really fun things and exciting things with us as a major partner, too. Yeah. So, in addition to coming down that way, I think you, we'll have the cooling buses. I know, you know, last yes, year yes. it was extremely hot. Yeah, and so the MTA July. stepped up in a very big way and made sure that there were cooling buses on site, just in case they got a little hot All right. had to go cool out. Shalonda Stokes, Graybow Media, thank you so much for coming out and talking to us. We'll look forward to this year's African American Festival. Thank you so much. All right, coming up next, we move from Camden Yards to the Arts District and another popular summertime event in our city. Stay with us, we're back in just a moment. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back, everybody. This is MTA Commuter Connections, and I'm Terry Owens. Well, one of the biggest annual events of the year, of course, is Artscape, and it's going into its 32nd year this year, if you can believe that. Here to tell us what's on tap for this year is Tracy Baskerville. She's Director of Communications at the Baltimore Office of Promotion and the Arts. Tracy, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. 32 years. Can you believe it? No, I cannot believe it. Do you know what people were thinking when they dreamed up this idea 32 years ago? Did they have any idea that it would become what it is today? I'm not sure if they knew how long it would continue, but I think the goal behind it, as still then, was a way to showcase artists. And especially, they wanted to focus on Baltimore artists. artists and we've done that, and we've expanded it, not only Baltimore, Maryland, the United States, globally. So we've expanded on their premise. You guys continue to grow this thing every year. The footprint has expanded out over the years. And now, I, I don't know how many square blocks you actually eat up with this thing, but. We do, it's in the perfect location and we've added to it, like you mentioned, we're right along Mount Royal Avenue and we've expanded to Charles Street and then from Charles Street closer to North Avenue. So each year we've expanding the footprint a little bit more and that area is just such the perfect place for Artscape because you're celebrating the visual and performing arts. So up there you have the BSO, you have the Charles Theater, you have Single Carrot Theater, you have Theater Project. So on Brown Center, Micah, it is the perfect location to host an arts festival. You get to hear from people around the country about this event. 
we here locally probably take it for granted. Well, what do people around the country say about this thing? They really love this festival. And even as we have artists, we have our artist market and we have an application process. So we have close to 400 artists from not only Baltimore, from around the country who apply. They want to be a part of Artscape. The great thing about Artscape is that just the energy and that people are looking to buy art as well. So for those artists, they really, especially in our artist market, they are really finding new customers at Artscape. And so it's a chance also to find new artists too. So not only the, the artists that are there selling the wares, but the performing artists, they want to be a part of Artscape. Talk a little about the financial impact something like this has on the city. We have um, more than a million dollars in economic impact. Wow. We get close to over 350,000 people attend Artscape over the course of the three days. So the economic impact is not only on the artists that we hire, but also in the terms of people come out. They spend money on transportation, you're spending money on gas to get there. Once you're in the neighborhood, you might go visit a restaurant. So all of that really, really plays into the economy when it comes to Baltimore and Artscape. But I would think almost as important as the, the money that's being pumped into the community is what it does for the life of a community, I would think. Yeah, I think for Baltimore, it just reminds people that Baltimore has so many things going on to, on with it. It really, the vibrancy and Artscape continues that. So they're not only with Artscape, but events that happen throughout the year. And I think people really love Baltimore for that. We, I mean, we're an events town from fireworks to parades. Baltimore loves a good event. Yeah, and the Baltimore Office of the Promotions in the Arts is always behind all of them and making things exciting for us throughout the summer and all year round, of course. And uh, Artscape is just one of those activities. Now, as you guys gear up for this year, do you, what is that process? You know, entertainment is always such a big part of this. What goes into trying to identify acts for each well, year. For each year, we um, it is we have a booking agent. We work with that booking agent. This year, we came up with a theme, an international theme, um, is this year. So we're going to have performing artists from more than 30 countries, from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, is the theme for this year. So um, we're looking when we start looking for artists, we start going with that for our theme. There's going to be a great visual arts exhibition along Charles Street called No Passport Required. So it's a chance for you to travel to different countries through that art exhibition. In um, right here at Artscape. Okay, and the, what would a festival be without good food? And how do you identify the vendors? I know people line up to do this. We do. They do, actually. There are so many food vendors that are out there and they <laughs> want to be a part of Artscape. And we work with um, Charm City Hospitality to sort of organize all of that. So there are so many um, faces and the team behind everything that Artscape does. And also new this year, I wanted to let you know, we were, as you're walking around and you're looking for food or you're looking for um, a stage that we have, are announcing a new mobile app this year mm. for Artscape. Oh. So when you're walking around and you do want to find out what's to eat or who's on this stage, you can download it's a free app. It's going to debut in June and then that way you can have it as you walk around and we'll keep all the updates right there. So as you're walking around, if something's changed or something's new, you can find out immediately. Okay, so people who want to get this on their calendar, what are the dates again? It is July 9th through 20th and 21st. Fantastic. Artscape, of course, always one of the biggest events of the year in Baltimore. We won't miss it. Some tremendous entertainment we know is coming. And uh, Tracy will be, how do you keep from buying new art every year is what I want to know. It's tough. <laughs> it is tough because you look around and you see the artist and you're like, oh, this will look great in my house or if it's jewelry, I would love to wear that. So it's very tough. So as you walk around, definitely encourage people. And also it's so great to patronize the artists. They work so hard on their craft. So definitely come out and, and really look at and, and you know, take a chance, find a new artist that you would like, and then you become a part of their mailing list too, and a part of them throughout the year. And a lot of us also look forward to what the Micah kids are going to do every year. Yes. And just a reminder that because we have so many things, there are things inside. So don't forget that. There are so many things inside the buildings for people to go to. From the Brown Center, we have Kidscape, we have Corpus Christi. There is um, also, oh, I forgot, Brown Center, I think I mentioned. Yes. But there are a lot of things that are inside. So just a reminder for people that the festival is just not outside. You can go inside and enjoy a show, enjoy opera, something you might not have a chance to do And most otherwise. of it free of charge. Everything is free. Everything is free. Thank you, Tracy. Well, for more than a decade now, the MTA has teamed up with the Maryland Institute College of the Art to feature the work of some very talented Baltimore City Public School students. We call the effort Words on Wheels. The annual Words on Wheels Poetry Contest is one of the biggest events of the year at the Maryland Transit Administration. Deshaun Dorsey, 
The competition features the best of the best young poets in the Baltimore City public school system. Fourteen winners were selected by a panel of judges this year and include students from the second to the eighth grade. It feels really good. I, I, I want people to know, I want people to know um, who I am and what I do and um, I want to be an inspiration to people so it feels really good. It's pretty cool actually. I get to meet um, a bunch of other poets and it's, I just love all the poems that come together. Jumping off the high dive makes me feel free. I feel like I'm flying. I feel like I'm doing gymnastics in the air. I feel like I can do anything and sometimes I feel like I'm gliding. Jumping off the high dive makes me feel happy. During a ceremony at MTA headquarters, each of the poets got to read their poems aloud in front of fellow students, parents, teachers, and MTA staff. Students from the Maryland Institute College of the Arts, a longtime partner and supporter of the Words on Wheels program, were also on hand. Micah students created the artwork that accompanies the poems, which will be featured on MTA buses. It was interesting um, to see the words just on a page and have to really come up with my own idea was a new experience that I really loved. Sometimes when I give the poems to my students, they're reading them and they're amazed that these are children in second grade and third grade and fifth grade. I mean, they think that they're adults writing these poems. They're very insightful. Midtown Academy 8th grader Kia Davis summed up her experience. I'm very blessed and I'm appreciative because I didn't know my writing means so much to people and when they told me that I won, I was like, wow, I can really change some people's ways. And coming up next, we'll have an update on the Mark West Baltimore parking expansion. Stay with us, we're back in just a moment. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? You sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. Well, have you traveled to West Baltimore lately? Welcome back, everybody. This is MTA Commuter Connections. I'm Terry Owens. We're talking about the Mark Expansion Project over there. There's an awful lot going on. And here to tell us what we're doing is MTA's Stacy Francisco. Stacy, you're a community development coordinator? Yes. Um, I used to do community outreach um, coordinate coordination, but now um, there's more of a need to try to uh, network with what development potential is possibly happening in communities and try to work with, like, bridge those kind of gaps that are happening between the city, um, developers that may be in the area, organizations, institutions, and trying to really bring it all together. So it's a lot of networking and a lot of keeping track of kind of how we can take what the state does in terms of resources putting into communities and combine them with other things that are happening. An example is that the with West Baltimore Mark, when we were working on the project, the city also started doing a, a streetscaping through the Department of Transportation of Pulaski Street and below it. So our project is going to tie into that. So it's like we're spending money from different pockets, but all with the idea of helping to support kind of uh, community development and revitalization along with our project. And talk about the importance of keeping the community involved as you move forward with these initiatives. Right, well uh, West Baltimore and Mark in, in particular and some also some of our other areas where we have uh, projects are very important because of environmental justice communities. West Baltimore Mark um, community is an environmental justice because before it was the road to nowhere was built there which actually led to a lot of the uh, environmental justice work that was done in the federal government to protect communities. So for us, it's important to make sure that these communities are uh, working with us and we're working with them to try to partner and helping to not displace or um, 
make sure they're engaged in how their community is reformed and, and redeveloped and revitalized. So this uh, sounds like some very exciting initiatives going on over there. Give me a sense of where we are and what folks yes. can look forward to. Well, right now, of course, as you know with anything, when there's a project, everybody gets excited, but then the reality is the construction. Yeah. So right now we're in the midst of the construction, but you know, we're in the sec uh, second phase, which first there was the demolition of the, the highway to nowhere, the uh, abutment on the highway to nowhere. So the community is kind of like we're getting used to it. Now we're going into the construction phase. So they're get, they're demolishing a couple more parts and then getting ready to uh, reintegrate the streets, uh, Payson Street, and then really kind of hopefully make that more of a, a better flow for tra all the transportation modes that go through there. So that's where we are today. And, you know, that's a little bit of like, you know, we've got closures on right now. There's on Franklin Street, if you're going um, uh, westbound, Franklin Street between um, Monroe and uh, Pulaski Street is closed. And so that's going to continue as we continue to do some work that this project needs. And then, but and then we're going to have other closures, but we're trying to keep track of that and keep the community informed about that. If people want to know about that, they can go to our website, okay. which is www.wbmarkproject.com, or they can look at the Baltimore City um, Transportation Advisor, or Transit ad ad Advisories, because those usually tell you what's going to happen in the area. For people that use that West Baltimore Mark Station at the end of the day, what is all of this going to mean for them? At the end of the day, we hope that, like, when we were working with the communities, looking at this project, connecting, reconnecting Patient Street was a very big thing in terms of recreating a kind of a neighborhood sense. The highway had dominated so much of that part and Payson Street was disconnected. And also the, just the abutment being there had disconnected these two kind of north and south neighborhoods. Now we're hoping and looking as we have this project and we also have following behind it the station improvement and upgrades project for ADA issues, uh, ADA um, compliance that's coming up following that, we're hoping that this kind of creates the synergy which like attracts developers or attracts developers like going forward even into the red line and how that can all kind of come together and play to help revitalize the community that because a lot of the areas have some issues with you know vacant homes and so yeah. they're, they need that and so you've also got some meetings coming up that you're trying to get the community to participate in tell us what you're doing right because a part of the parking expansion we did get a transportation enhancement program grant um, to do a, 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 an art project okay. on the as a part of the parking expansion. So that's kind of exciting. So we were able to double our the double the amount of funds that went into that. Um, that's gonna start, we're gonna start looking at doing some kinetic workshops with the community uh, members, like uh, the last week in June and towards the middle of uh, uh, mid-July. Okay. So, and then going into the fall. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's happening over there. Again, uh, those dates are kind of still to be de de to be determined, and so people need to look again website. Okay. okay. But what is you want people to come out to these workshops, and they'll have an opportunity to do what? Well, basically, they're going to have an opportunity to kind of like uh, it's more for the the artist can explain a little bit more, but it's it's more like making their mark and so they're going to be doing it's like these kinetic painting workshops is like and we want kids everybody to come out they're going to be kind of getting involved in making these painting marks i don't know what they're going to be exactly so it's kind of like interpreting and so the public artists that were chosen by with the from the committee with community members um actually is a good they're very good at working with community so we're going to try to like weave this in so that there's this kind of like beacons standing still standing out there for that represent themes or people in the community and i think it's going to be pretty pretty nice fantastic I, pretty cool and the best way for people to stay apprised of all that's going on again give that website it's www.wbmarkproject.com all right, Stacy Francisco working for us over in West Baltimore around that Mark Station as that parking lot expansion moves forward. So excited about what's to come and we know that uh, we can count on you to keep us up to speed. Yes. All right. Well, there are two very simple words, but we don't hear them near often enough. And those words, of course, are thank you. The governor and the entire state of Maryland recently paused to acknowledge the hard work of its employees with an Employee Recognition Day. MTA Administrator Rollin Wells showed his appreciation for the efforts of his workers. I'm excited about some of the, the future of, of the agency and again it's you all who help us to make this happen so I just want to say thank you 
for myself and also on behalf of the governor and the secretary of transportation, I want to say thank you as well. So let's eat. Those in attendance were remembered and treated to light refreshments, including pastries and juice at this Breakfast of Champions event held at the MTA headquarters in downtown Baltimore. And a little later in the day, a tasty ice cream social at a lunch hour ice cream event held at the MTA North Avenue Light Rail Division. Coming up next on Commuter Connections, we'll answer your questions in our Ask the MTA segment. Stay with us. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! <laughs> Hi, I'm Dean Atkins of the MTA Office of Service Oversight. And here's our first question. My name is Dwayne Ward. I live in Randallstown, Maryland. And again, um, I'd like to know why um, can't MTA get the bus that goes to Randalltown and the number 22 running on time or whatever? Over the recent years, our number 22 line has increased with ridership. Unfortunately, our schedules haven't kept up with that increase. Good news is our service development department is undertaking an, an exhaustive review of our overall schedules. Hopefully once that review is complete, this patron will enjoy more satisfaction with his experience with the 22 line. Now for our next question. My name is Angine Wolford. I'm from Phoenix, Maryland. And I'd like to ask if there's any possibility that we can get an express train from uh, northern Baltimore County all the way down to downtown Baltimore. When light rail originally opened, light rail was a single tracking rail system, which means one train had to pause while another train passed through before that train could continue with its trip. Over the last five years, we've completed our double tracking project, which means now our trains can pass more rapidly through the system. With respect to adding a, a express train or an express train, we would have to do a review of our current schedules as well as an exhaustive review of our system to see if it could tolerate that additional service. However, good things come in the future. This may be one of those. Now for our next question. Good morning. My name is Jada and I would like to ask the MTA panel, when will our subway system be updated? The only plans on the table now for rail expansion we have are our red and purple lines. Tunneling, which is what you would have to do to expand Metro, is the most cost prohibitive form of uh, rail construction that you can undertake. And we all understand what uh, restricting budgets are like in this day and age. However, you never know what the future may hold. We appreciate your input. If you have a question you'd like to ask the MTA, visit our website at mta.maryland.gov for a convenient TV show link or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter. And that's going to do it for this edition of Commuter Connections. I'm Terry Owens. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.